Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum cost to hire K workers. I actually like this problem and maybe by the end of this video you will too. So we're given N workers, but we're actually given that in the form of two different arrays, quality and wages. So if this is our example, this is just the first example by the way, and let's say we're also given a variable K, which in this example is going to be two. Our goal here is basically to choose K workers, and there's always gonna be at least K workers to choose from, so we don't have to worry about that. We need to choose two of these workers, but we need to do it such that we minimize the wage, but it's not gonna be that straightforward. We're not just gonna take these wages and then add them up, which in that, this like example would be 120. It's gonna be more complicated than that, and basically the rules of this game are stated over here. This wage that's shown over here it's kind of misleading because the way I think of like the word wage is like, what rate are you going to pay somebody? Like this is 70 per hour or something like that. And this is slightly different. This is not the wage. This is kind of like the minimum wage that this person is going to accept. So it's 70 for the first person. It's 50 for the next person. Okay. And what we're trying to do here is minimize the total wage that we are going to pay out. And so in this example here, if we pay the first person 70, maybe we can give the second person over here 30 and then our total will be 100. But it's actually not going to work like that, unfortunately. It's going to be a little bit more complicated because the idea is that the minimum wage of this person is 30, the minimum of this person is 70. But if we give to this person, like if we hire this person, we have to pay this person at least 35. Why 35? Well, it has to do with the ratio. The ratio is really what determines the wage for this problem. See, what we have shown here, this is actually not the wage of this person. Neither is this one. The ratio tells us that this person is being paid 70 for 10 uh, like quality or whatever you want to consider this. This is like a unit of work though. So this person is really being paid 70 over 10, which is a rate of seven. Like that's the ratio here. Now we are paying them in a total 70, but this person is being paid seven. Basically the idea of this problem is this second bullet over here, which means that if a person like this first person over here is being paid this ratio, that's what they mean by proportion. So over here, this person is being paid another ratio, 30 over five, and this ratio is smaller. Like this is, I believe six, and this is over here, seven. So why are we paying this person more? We're not allowed to do that. We have to pay everybody the same, like the same rate. So th therefore the same ratio. So what can we do here? Well. We could theoretically lower this person's wage over here. That's one possibility if we wanna be like full capitalists, but the other possibility is that we increase the other person's wage. Now in this problem, we're only allowed to do one. We can only increase this person's wage because if we lower this person's wage, we've gone below their minimum wage. So we can't do that. So this is just one big problem of ratios. So what we do instead is to make this person's ratio the same as this person's, we pay them 35 uh, for five units of work, which is the same ratio, it's seven. So basically what we learned here by going through this example is that like obviously the ratios matter and also the person among, like in our group here, the person with the highest ratio, they kind of decide what the rate is going to be for each person. And that ratio itself decides what the wage rate is going to be. Because suppose we have the rate, the rate happens to be seven. Once we have that, it's pretty trivial to calculate. Like if we had these two workers, it's easy for us to calculate the total amount of money that we'd spend, which is what we're required to do. For example, in the first example that we had, we'd pretty much like these were the two people we chose. We just take up these qualities and add them together, 10 plus five is gonna be 15. So we take our rate and multiply it by this, which our rate was seven. So seven times this much like work and we'd get 105. So at that point, it's easy to calculate this and that would be our result. That'd be our total. Uh, if we, for example, chose these two, 
we would get a higher total. Let me quickly show it to you. Well, first, let's take this ratio. This is 30 over 5. That's 6. Let's take this ratio. It's 50 over 20. That's 2.5. Obviously, this has a smaller uh, ratio. So this one actually has the bigger one. So we always choose the maximum ratio, which is 6 in this problem. We'd take 6 and then multiply it by this over here. That's 5. That's 30. And then multiplying it by this, that's 120. So I think we'd get something like 150, which is obviously bigger than what we had previously. Okay, so now all of this said, th this has helped us get some intuition for the problem. But how do we actually solve the problem? And let's just start with a brute force approach. Suppose we just start at the beginning of these arrays and then just iterate going one direction. So we get to this first person here. We keep track, like we calculate what the rate is. It's 70 over 10. So let's say it's seven. And this person, we just put them as a part of our group for now. And then we get to a second person over here. Our wage is still seven because this wage is going to be smaller, like this rate is going to be smaller. 50 divided by 20 is obviously smaller than 7. And now we have these two people so far. The total like cost we'd have is 7 multiplied by like the total amount of quality. Let's just assume that we have a separate variable which tracks the total quality. So we have right now 30 times uh, 7. So that's going to be 210. Okay, now the only question we have is, can, do we have a way to brute force this? Now, as we have more people here, with quality and some work, do we have a way of brute forcing this so that we make sure that we only have two people as a part of like the group that we're hiring and we make sure that it's going to be optimal? Can we brute force that? Let's think about it. When we get to this third person, we can calculate their rate. It's going to be 30 over 5. That's 6. I don't really know how to consider a solution. Like, we have many possibilities. What we could do is say, okay, let's include this one, but let's skip this worker. Or we could include this worker and skip this worker, or we could just skip this worker altogether and then leave it as these two workers. The way we're going about this, we're just going through these in a random order. It would be better for us to sort this. The idea is this, we have this as an input, we then compute another array, let's call it the ratio or whatever, and then, so 70 over 10, that's gonna be seven, this over that, and along with each of these like ratio values, we can think of this as the new wage. We really have no need for the wage anymore because this is like the true wage. This is what somebody's gonna be paid per unit of work or like the quality of work. We do still need the quality, of course, or at least we need one of these. This is basically uh, like think of it if you ever learned physics, like speed or velocity is equal to like the distance divided by time. As long as you have two of these variables, you have the third variable. You can compute it. So basically what we're saying with this is we were given the distance. You can think of that as like the wage and the time is like the quality. And so we've basically just computed one of these now. We condensed these two into like one variable here. Now we're going to take this and then sort, let's say the quality based on this. And let's think of this as pairs now. We're getting rid of the wage. We have the ratio and we have the quality. And we're going to sort this based on the ratio in ascending order. So we're going to have by the end of this, we're going to have 20 is the quality and 2.5 is the ratio and then we'll have six and then we'll have seven and so we'll have this is the quality this is the ratio and then we're gonna pick the first two of these and we're gonna say this is our solution so far and so by doing this we're sort of being greedy we knew that the wage itself was not enough we were trying to be greedy with the wage this is 70, this is 50, this is 30. If we're trying to be greedy with the wage, we just pick the two smallest wages. But we know that's not enough because the quality decides how much we actually pay them. So then we put that information into the ratio. And so now we ordered it based on that. We know both quality and wage matter. And so we've ordered them based on that. So now we're still trying to be greedy. We're trying to pick the first two, but even that is not enough, believe it or not, because the ratio at this point 
pretty much just tells us the wage. So like we could have a case like this one where we have two people here and the ratio here could be really big, seven, but the quality here, it could be a one, which is good because then this person only gets paid seven, or it could be a hundred, which means this person gets paid a lot. So the ratio itself doesn't tell us everything, but it does tell us like, it's possible that the solution is here. That would be us just trying to be greedy, just making the best guess that we can. But now, as we try to shift our window, we want to introduce another value over here. And so either our first guess was correct, we already found the solution, or now we have to keep introducing new values into our set. And as we do this, we're, we know we can only have at most two as a part of the set. So what do we do? We remove from our set of people. Look, as we're going through this and we get to a new person, of course, we know that this new person's rate is going to be greater than or equal to the previous one. So obviously, this rate is the one that matters the most. As we discussed earlier, the largest rate is going to decide how much we pay everybody else. Because if our rate now is seven, then we're going to pay the previous people seven as well. So it does matter which one we remove. We want to remove the person that would be paid the least. With seven, we should remove the one that had the highest quality because that at this point is gonna decide how much we pay them. The ratio doesn't really matter anymore. So at this point of these two people, we should we could either pay this person seven times five or we could pay this person seven times 20. Obviously, let's remove this person. So when we store these people as a part of our group of size K, the data structure we're gonna use is gonna be a heap specifically a max heap because we want to remove the largest quality from our heap like that's what we're going to store in that max heap we're going to store the quality values even though the input is going to be sorted based on the ratio and so we're also going to keep track of the total quality in our set of k because that's going to allow us to uh, calculate the total that we're going to pay out and so as we go through this, so let's say this is our heap initially, we're going to end up popping this and then adding this to our heap. So this is our heap at this point. It's going to be uh, this guy over here and this guy. The total quality is going to be 5 plus 10, which is 15. And the wage is going to be 7. It's always going to be the maximum of these two. So it's going to be 7. So 7 times 15 is going to be 105. So whatever value we have by the end of this, like we're always going to be computing what the best wage is, the minimum wage that we could pay out. And as we go through this, this was a pretty small input, but imagine we have more numbers. We're going to continue to pop values and push them, making sure our heap is always of size K and then returning whatever minimum wage we could get by then. So what we do is try to start off greedy, but then we know we're gonna have to remove some and then add some, and we're trying to do so in an intelligent way. So now let's code this up and I'm gonna initialize our result over here like this. We know we're trying to minimize this, so I'm gonna set it to a really big number and then that's what we're gonna return down here. Now, the first thing I want to do is basically compute the ratio that I talked about because I'm going to put it in an array that I'm going to call pairs. And so it's going to be a pair that's going to look like this. The first value is going to be that ratio I was talking about. And second is going to be quality. And ultimately, we want to sort it uh, based on the ratio. So that would look like this, pairs.sort. And the key we want to do is a lambda function. And... We want to sort the pair based on the first key, the ratio, the first of its pair. Uh, but first, we actually have to populate this pairs array. So the way I'm going to do that is pretty simply like this for i in range, length of quality. We're going to append to this pairs a pair that's going to look like this. We're going to take the wage at index i and divide that by the quality at index i. And the second in the pair is going to be the quality itself. So next, we want to have the max heap. And think about again what we're doing here. This is just going to store the qualities. We've sorted the ratios up here. And now we're going to go through them in ascending order. And uh, while we do that, we're gonna keep track of what the total quality is, because we know that's useful for us to actually calculate how much we're paying out. It's easier to calculate it like this because we know that the wage itself is changing. Remember, as we go through the sorted pairs, 
the rate that we pay people is literally changing. That's why we total up the quality. The quality never changes. How much we pay people for that quality is changing. I guess just to reword that, the quality for each individual person is not changing. As we include people and remove people, that then the quality is going to change. So I guess let's just uh, get to the code. So first, uh, we're going to go through our pairs, and we're going to do that like this. So for ratio Q in pairs, we're going to add this person to our group of K. We're going to say heap Q dot heap push to the max heap this person Q. Now in Python, the asterisk here is that heaps are only implemented as minimum heaps in Python. For us to have a max heap here, instead of adding the quality, we're just going to add the negative of the quality. I know this is kind of annoying, especially if you're new to heaps, but this is just the way to get around this in Python. We just have to keep in mind that the value we added here is negative. So we've changed the sign of it basically. So we've added this person to the group and we're going to take their quality and add that to the total quality as well here. So now there's a couple things we want to check for. Ideally, we want to update the result. How do we update it? Well, we want to minimize it. We want to set it equal to the minimum of itself as well as what the current a group of people will cost us. Well, first of all, we can only do this if we have chosen at least K people. So basically, if the length of the max heap is equal to K, only then can we do this assignment. And how would we actually do the assignment itself? Well, to calculate it, we're going to take the total number of quality and multiply that by the rate. Now, what is the rate? Well, I guess I should have just called the ratio the rate. I'll kind of do that right now. I'll change that to rate because that's what it is. This is the rate that we're paying people. And if this is the total amount of quality that we got, well, this rate multiplied by that quality should do it. I think, honestly, the hardest part about this problem is a lot of these things don't make sense. If this problem actually like made sense and we were paying everybody what the word wage actually means, then I think this problem would be slightly easier. There's one other thing here though. What's going to happen when the size of the heap is greater than K? Well, I'm going to first put that up here. The reason I'm putting this line of code up here is because we might be greater than K, but what we're going to do inside of this if statement is remove an element. And then after that, we'd always want to execute this. So we definitely don't want to put this before this if statement. Just keep that in mind. But here, what if the size of the heap is greater than K? Well, then we should definitely say heap Q dot heap pop from the max heap. And the value that we pop, since we're removing this person now, we want to decrement their quality from the total quality. How do we do that? Well, the easiest way is basically to take whatever value let's say n was given here, and then take that and remove it from the total quality just like this. Remember, when we added this n to the heap, we added it as a negative value. So here, we'd actually want to add this value to the total quality. And if we're going to do this, we might as well take this line and then move it up here. And then we can just get rid of this line down here. This is the entire code. We sorted the input. That's going to be n log n. And then here, we potentially push and pop from a heap of size k. So that's going to be n log k, I believe. So the overall time complexity is going to be n log n plus n log k. And overall space is going to be big O of n, I believe, for the extra array here. Let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews and you want to learn more about heaps, you can check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.